In the previous episode, we talked about the high and low paths of the fear response, which by itself isn't always a bad thing. In fact, the fear response is a pretty handy survival mechanism that you'd probably miss if it were gone. I don't know what this thing is, but he can fit my whole foot in his mouth. Awesome! Rest in peace, guy being eaten by a puma. But fear can easily make a person's life worse in a variety of not-at-all-fruity flavors. Phobias and anxiety both stem from the overactivation of the fear response. And yes, in some circumstances, it is possible to literally be scared to death, which is one definition of an unhealthy response. Allow me to explain. First of all, I'm not the sort of guy who diagnoses or treats mental health issues. I'm the sort of guy who talks to puppets. As always, if you're looking for a consultant on your health, ask a health professional. Some fears seem to be more natural and universal, such as the fear of height or the fear of darkness. But thanks to what might be the world's worst superpower, people can also add fears to their repertoire through learning. The difference between a fear and a phobia is that a recurring fear becomes a phobia when a person's life is made significantly worse by its existence. I would be afraid to share a pool with an angry shark, but my day-to-day -day life is not held back by that fear. But if you're, say, a rodeo clown that's afraid of barrels, that would certainly interfere with your life and could be called a phobia. Jump in the barrel, Jimmy! He's right behind you! No thanks! I'll take my chances with the bull! Rest in peace, Jimmy. Gored by bull. Another important feature of phobias is that they are irrational. People diagnosed with a phobia understand that they are overreacting. On the other hand, if a person believes that there are actually sharks out to get them, then that's called a delusion and is not just a phobia. Fear. I am uncomfortable around barrels. Phobia. My fear of barrels makes my life worse. Delusion. If I get in a barrel, I will die. Psychosis. I can't trust anyone. They could be working for the barrels. This irrational overreaction is explained when you look at the low path that the fear reaction takes through the brain. It's fast, nearly automatic, and it doesn't pass through any conscious parts of the brain. Your phobic reaction happens before you even realize it. And this reaction is so strong, it can be difficult to overcome even once the rational parts of your brain do start to kick in. Many phobias appear to have a clear-cut relationship between a traumatic event and the phobia thanks to classical conditioning. Something bad happened and you now associate some aspect of that event with fear. For instance, if you were in a car accident and now fear driving. But sometimes the cause isn't so certain. You can learn to be afraid of anything. It doesn't even have to be a thing. For example, when I was a kid, I used to fear cotton balls. I never figured out why, but I used to be really uncomfortable around them. Long story short, that's actually how I got elected to my middle school student council. Kids love weird things. Studies do seem to show that you are more likely to develop a fear around certain things. For example, in one study, monkeys learned to fear snakes much faster than they learned to fear flowers. I don't know why, flowers are terrifying. Oh man, not again! Rest in peace, guy squished by flower. Fortunately, the kind of overreactive fear that can be found in a phobia can usually be treated with cognitive behavioral therapy. CBT looks at the relationship between a person's thoughts and behaviors and seeks to modify them through action in order to improve the quality of their life. One therapy is exposure therapy, in which you experience the thing you're afraid of in a non-threatening situation. You know, I hear they have great fried okra here. Eh, I'm more into smelling blood and swimming towards it. Oh, <laughs> well, you gotta have hobbies. Rest in peace, guy who choked on okra because sharks don't know the Heimlich. And then there's systematic desensitization, in which you slowly unlearn your fear responses. Such as first seeing a picture of a flower, then being in the same room as one, and then finally marrying one and taking out a mortgage together. Alright, so if phobias are sort of like an overactive low-road fear response, then generalized anxiety disorder can be seen as an overactive high-road fear response. At its heart, anxiety is an overestimation of threat. Generalized anxiety disorder, or GAD, occurs when worrying takes over a significant enough portion of your life that it negatively impacts you. But anxiety isn't just psychological. There are many physical symptoms that enter the mix, too. These symptoms stem from the activation of the fight-or-flight response at unwanted times. I'll let this handsome gentleman explain those. It's the heart-racing, tense muscles, adrenaline-pumping, wide-eyed, palms-are-sweaty reaction that we're all familiar with. And behind the scenes, your digestion and immune systems slow down. That last part is especially problematic. In order for your body to conserve energy, in order to run away or fight off an attacker, your body slows down your immune system and your digestive system when you feel threatened. In this way, anxiety can increase the likelihood of other illnesses, as well as lead to weight gain, sluggishness, and other digestive issues. So you see, it's a complicated and messy chain of events that can feed on itself. After all, poor health can lead to more anxiety. So it isn't something that a person can just snap out of. Anxiety is a very real and tangible problem. 
Like with phobias, exposure and desensitization therapies can help with some forms of anxiety. There are also anti-anxiety medications and some relaxation therapies. Meditation, breathing exercises, and workout schedules have all been effective, depending on the person. But fear can have an even worse effect. A person can literally be scared to death. Adrenaline is toxic in large amounts, and all of the adrenaline pumping through a shocked person's system can sometimes cause the heart to enter a deadly, irregular rhythm. Don't worry though, this is extremely rare. Most of the time, adrenaline is just fine, and sometimes it can even be fun. Fear can be very powerful, but with bravery, practice, and a little bit of help, fear doesn't have to run the show. Xander here, thanks for watching. If you liked this episode, please hit the like button and subscribe. It really helps me out. Do you know of any strange phobias? Let me know about it in the comments below. And see you next time!